Jesus is, has a name above every name. He is spirit and, and many things. So let's begin our worship service this morning with this song. Will you stand as we sing? In the name of Jesus. Uh, the whole day. 
Yeah, and you want to be here for the whole day, okay? And so the youth and the worship team are working on, on the services for that day, and so we want to encourage you all, get up early, be here at 8.30, and be here for the whole day. It's going to be a very special day that day. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to be in this place today, to know that we can call on your name and you answer, to call on you and you hear. Father, we thank you so much that in your name there is power, in your name there is healing. We thank you that your name is a name that is above all names. And Father, we just cry out to you today, just asking you to lead us, to guide us through this day as we make a very uh, bold step of faith and asking you, Lord, if this is you, that you tell us to come and we come. So Father, we just ask you to move in our midst this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
and we need to crown him as that in our life, to crown him over every area of our life.
though you were king, you are the son of God, you humbled yourself and became obedient to death and then death on a cross. So as we gather around the Lord's table today, you help us to keep that proper place, you in that proper place in our life, that you are king, that you are savior, and we praise you for that in Jesus' name.
choose for a night. It is kind of funny at times. But anyway. But our, our point was to show how this ancient ceremony established in the time of Moses pointed to Jesus. And communion is a part of that because Jesus used the, the Passover Seder to establish and to emphasize communion. The Apostle Paul, in writing to the Corinthian church, said it this way, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The bread that Jesus was using there in the Seder is called the bread of affliction. It is meant to remind the people that when the children of Israel were leaving Egypt, they had to be ready to go at a moment's notice. So they didn't have time to allow their bread to rise. And so, as a part of the Seder, then, at, at another point of the Seder, then they take this bread out and they examine it. And they find, first off, that it is unleavened. Leaven is a symbol of sin. And so, having no leaven makes this bread sinless bread. They also take note that it has a striped appearance and that it has holes in it. It is pierced through. Now, originally it was a bread, the bread of affliction and that's what it was up until the time of Isaiah. But with the, the writings of Isaiah, the people began to understand and the people and the disciples and the people of Jesus' day would have understood that the bread was a symbol of the Messiah. So Jesus taking the bread and giving thanks and breaking it is a part of the Seder. But then Jesus saying, this is my body. He was essentially telling the disciples, you think this is a symbol of the Messiah? It is. This is me. I am the Messiah. Then he continues, in the same way after supper he took the cup and he gave it to them saying, this is a new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, there are four cups as a part of the Seder. The cup after supper that Jesus would have taken is called the cup of salvation or the cup of redemption. It is meant to remind the people of the price that was paid so that they could be free from slavery. So again, Jesus using this as a part of the Seder, but then as he's changed it and said, this is my blood. And essentially saying again, this is me. This is the price that will be paid for your salvation as a new covenant, as opposed to the old one. But as the Apostle Paul continues to talk about this, he gives a warning to us. And he says that if you partake in communion and you don't do it in the right way, you don't do it in a, in a worthy manner, then there's problems. And he describes the worthy manner <coughs> is by recognizing the body and the blood of Jesus. In other words, this isn't just something that we do in this church. This is a serious thing. But if we're partaking of communion just because, there could be problems. We need to recognize that the bread is Jesus' body and that the blood represents his blood that was shed for our sins. So as we partake today, consider these things. Pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you, Father, for establishing the Passover Seder that reminded the people for years and years ahead of Jesus what was coming. I thank you, Father, that we have this as a visual aid and as a reminder for us as, as well as for the Jews. Help us, Father, to recognize the body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus, and partake of communion in a worthy manner today. In Jesus' name, amen.
together this morning as children givers and the opportunity to give back a portion of that for which you've given us. In Jesus' name we pray.
And we started with the story of David. And I love the story of David and towards the end of his life from 1 Chronicles, the 28th chapter, we see David writing these words or saying these words. David summoned all the officials of Israel to assemble at Jerusalem. The officers over the tribes, the commanders of the divisions in service of the king, the commanders of thousands, the commanders of hundreds, and the officials in charge of all the property and livestock belonged to the king and his sons, together with the palace officials and the mighty men and all the brave warriors. And King David rose to his feet and said, Listen to me, my brothers and my people. I had it in my heart to build a house as a place of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord, for the footstool of our God. And I made plans to build it. At a leadership dinner, we, we focused on that passage of Scripture. I had it in my heart to build a house. Today, I want us to focus on a couple of houses. We're going to focus in a moment on the house of a family life center. But before we do that, I want us to focus on ourselves <coughs> as a house. Ourselves as a house. If you will, grab one of the Bibles, or your Bible, or one in the pew, and, and uh, turn to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. Because Peter speaks of a house. And he's talking about us. 1 Peter chapter 2, starting with verse 4. As you come to him, the living stone rejected by men but chosen by God and precious to Him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. As you come to Him, the living stone, rejected by men, chosen by God and precious. Chosen by and precious. And speaking of Jesus, that he is chosen and, and precious. But for some reason, I was reading through this passage early this morning again. I felt like we all need to be reminded of that. That that is who Jesus is. But notice the next verse. You also. You also. I think we need to be reminded that we are chosen and we are precious in the eyes of God. As His people, we are chosen and precious. Let's not forget that. Let's not forget to share that as a part of the message that God has given to us. That God so loved us, we are chosen, we are precious to God. And our ministry needs to share that wonderful message to those around us, to the communities in which we live, and the ministry circles that God gives us, that we are chosen and precious. But in verse 5, he talks, or, yeah, verse 5, there's some points of emphasis that I want us to look at. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house. We are a house. God wants us to be a house. But each of us is a living stone. We are each a part of a bigger picture. One stone does not make a house. One block did not make our basement. It took numerous blocks to make our basement. Each one of us is, is very, very important. But each one of us by ourselves is inadequate. You, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house. And so when we pool ourselves together, we have a greater good that happens. We are a house in which God can dwell. We are a living, breathing organization in which God can dwell. You're a stone being built into a House. There's another point of emphasis we want to see. Is that why are we being built into the house? To be a holy priesthood. If you study the Old Testament, and an Old Testament study would reveal to you that not very many people were actually priests. 
There was only a chosen family line that could be priests from, from which the priest could come. That there were only a few. Out of all of the tribes of Israel, only one tribe could have the priests. But yet, something different happens in the New Testament. As the veil is torn, and we sang that in a song earlier, as the veil is torn, all of a sudden, all of us, we are a priesthood of all believers. All of us can enter into the presence of God by a new and living way, open to us by the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's why we gather around the Lord's table to remind us. All of us are individual. We're being built into a house, but that house has a purpose, that we can be a priesthood, that we are a priesthood of all believers. All of us have roles and responsibilities. All of us have uh, privileges and that we count from being a part of this house. And then he goes on to say another point of emphasis, offering spiritual sacrifices. Offering spiritual sacrifices, pleasing to God. Again, in the Old Testament, if you studied it, there are a lot of different sacrifices that the priest would make. There were fellowship sacrifices, heave sacrifices, wave sacrifices, or offerings. There are all kinds of them. And you read through Leviticus, one of those really interesting books. It really is if you start to read it and study it. The book of Leviticus. And see all the sacrifices that were made. But that's what we are. We are to offer sacrifices. But don't miss this point. Pleasing or acceptable to God. You are a stone. Each one of us is precious and chosen in the sight of God. To be a part of something bigger. We're chosen to be part of his church, his family, his house. To be a royal priesthood, a priesthood of all believers, offering sacrifices, but sacrifices that are pleasing to God. This morning I want us to focus on that sacrifice that is pleasing to God. It's rather interesting when you study the New Testament, you see that there are several New Testament writers tell us things that are a sacrifice that is pleasing to God. And let's just quickly look through some of those references. Pleasing sacrifices. First, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Romans chapter 12 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, I would contend, as pleasing to God, which is your spiritual worship. The sacrifice that we can make as a rock being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering sacrifices is the offering of ourselves. When we think about ministry, we think about reaching out to our community. It's something that takes all of us. It takes our entire being to do. It's the sacrifice of ourselves that we give of ourselves wholeheartedly. I don't think it's any... Surprise then when Jesus would say to love the Lord your God with all your might, with all your soul, with all your strength. All of us are to be offered as a sacrifice. It's kind of an oxymoron, really, when you think about a living sacrifice. In the Old Testament, when there was a sacrifice, something died. But we are to live on. But there is a death. A death to our own will, a death to our own control, a death to our way and our thinking, and the living to God's way. Let us offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship, the sacrifice of ourselves. You go to the book of Hebrews and you see another sacrifice that is pleasing to God. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15, it says, Through him, then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of the lips that acknowledge his name. That's why we sang the song we did this morning. The fruit of our lips... I hope you came today. Maybe some of you thought, I don't want to sing today. I don't feel it in my heart. Sometimes it just means that we still do it. 
we still sing, we still offer praise to our God. The fruit of our lips, acknowledging the name of Jesus, that his name is a refuge, it is a fortress, it is a place to stand. It's a sacrifice that is pleasing to God. You jump one more verse, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 16, we see another sacrifice. Do not neglect to do good and to share with what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Good. It is the, the sacrifice of our deeds. The sacrifice of what we do. The sacrifice of our doing good. I mentioned last week that I had the opportunity to go to the Rural Church Conference, and there was a verse that says, let your light so shine before men that they see your good deeds and that they may glorify God on the day he visits us. As a church, that's something that we need to wrestle with. How are we showing Jesus Christ through what we are doing? Our deeds. Sometimes it's not so convenient maybe to come and do a food distribution. It's not so convenient to to be a youth sponsor, but it is through what we're doing, our deeds, that we can show the love of God. And through our deeds, they may come to glorify God on the day He returns. Let us offer to God the sacrifice of our deeds, the sacrifice of ourselves, the sacrifice of our praise, the sacrifice of our deeds. But for the fourth one, we jump to the Old Testament. Psalm chapter 116, verse 17. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. The sacrifice. In all things, give thanks. Not always easy. Sometimes when we don't feel like it, that's when we need to give thanks the most. Lord, I'm thankful for this day, even though it's blue, you know. I'm thankful. Give thanks to God. But there's a fourth or fifth sacrifice, which is leading to what this is significant about this day for us. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied, <coughs> having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. We just got done recently going through the book of Philippians. And Paul writes in this book to the people of Philippi. And he talks about contentment. He talks about having that joy in the Lord no matter what. But then he concludes this with that verse or these thoughts. I received this gift as a sacrifice of finances. It's a sacrifice of finances. You are a living stone to be a holy priesthood, being built into a spiritual house to be a priesthood to God, offering sacrifices that are pleasing to God. I had it in my heart as a kid to build a house, and it was where we lived. David had it in his heart to build a temple, and it's where the ark would rest. There's something that's been in the heart of this church for a lot of years. It's the heart of ministry. And our ministry impacting our community for future generations, for additional generations. And so for four weeks now, we have been talking about imagining what God has prepared. Imagining what God can do through us. Today we're going to conclude our worship service way different. We're going to conclude our worship <coughs> by hopefully you making a sacrifice. All of us, whether we're young, whether we're old, whether we're married or we're single, all of us can make a sacrifice. <coughs> and some, some of us may think, well, what I would be able to give towards this ministry opportunity isn't that significant. Yes, it is. Everybody is significant. You're precious. And special in the sight of God. It's significant. All of us can make a sacrifice 
for ministry. The giving of ourselves, the giving of our praise, the giving of our thanks, the giving of our deeds, but the giving of our finances as well. In your bulletin, hopefully everybody has one of these inserts that you can pull up. In your bulletin is a commitment card. This past Friday, we gathered all of our leadership, staff, elders, and all the ministry leaders, and we walked through this. And just as David gathered the leaders together, David's, David gathered them and he said, I had it in my heart to give. And then David said, here's what I did. Monica and I have made a commitment to this. Our leadership has made a commitment to this. So far through the leadership, the staff, elders, and ministry leaders, we have $162,800 committed to this project already. But all of us can be a part of this. Everybody is significant. Everybody is special. So what we're asking you to prayerfully consider is making a three-year commitment. That's why this site says, my 36-month commitment. This is a defining moment in the history of our church. In order for Central Church of Christ to plan and move forward, giving estimates are necessary. This is a statement of intent and may be increased or decreased at any time. All gifts are going to be left confidential. Two men will see what you write. But what's, not, not, what's important is not the individual gift. It's going to be important today is what we, the spiritual house, want to sacrifice to give back to God. So on the other side of this, we just ask you to fill out your name, address, all that stuff. And then there's my total gift <coughs> to imagine. For those of you, maybe this is your first Sunday here, we've been talking about this. The imagining that we're doing is imagine that we can enclose this courtyard space and make it a year-round family life center that we can do ministry, have living, active, relevant ministry in our community for another generation. And so we're asking everybody to consider a three-year commitment, a gift, either weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually, but a total gift that you would like to say, God, I trust you, that I will give. This is my sacrifice of finances. Next Sunday... We're going to have a first fruits for the Sunday. <laughs> or maybe you could bring that first gift towards this as we begin taking the next step towards making that a dream, that dream a reality. We haven't signed any contracts yet. We haven't signed any bank notes yet. But this is important for us so we know how to take and what to take the next step to take is. And so we're going to, Randy and Becky are going to sing a song. And I want to encourage you as husband, wife, as families to just kind of <clears throat> gather in prayer and just go, God, today is my day to make a sacrifice. A sacrifice of myself, a sacrifice of praise, a sacrifice of thanksgiving, a sacrifice of deed, giving of myself, but a sacrifice of finances as well. And then as they sing this song, um, Jeff, meet me halfway with that chest, if you will. I forgot to carry this up here. <laughs>
2 Kings chapter 12. It says this, Jehoiada the priest took a chest and he bored a hole in it. He placed it beside the altar on the right side of it as one enters the temple of the Lord. The priest who guarded the entrance into <clears throat> the entrance put into the chest all the money that was brought to the temple of the Lord. Whenever they saw that there was a large amount of money in the chest, the royal secretary and the high priest came and counted the money that had been brought into the temple of the Lord and put it in the bags. When the amount had been determined, they gave the money to the men appointed to supervise the work of the temple. <coughs> when did they paid those who worked on the temple of the Lord, the carpenters and the builders, the masons and the stone cutters. They purchased timber and dressed stone for the repair of the temple of the Lord and met all the other expenses of repairing the temple. Tuesday morning I read that. And so Thursday afternoon I went home and I built the chest. Because I'm just one of the priests of this place. We are all a priesthood of believers. But as priests, we can offer a sacrifice. So as this song is being sung, will you just bow your head maybe and just pray over kind of what kind of sacrifice do you ask for? <coughs> this is going to be at the back by an artist drawing of what the building would look like with the Family Life Center in that courtyard space. <coughs> and we just ask whenever you feel you want to fill that card out, if you would just take it to the back and we'll put it in the chest and then return to your seat. And we're going to close our service out with a song, a sacrifice of praise and prayer. Take the time.
commitment. Next week, that box is going to be there for us to put our first fruits offering in. Because the imagining is, is that we can imagine our ministry impacting our community for yet another generation. Imagining what God has in store for us. I believe that rural church ministry can be living, active, and relevant. And I believe Grizzle Church has a great legacy and a great heritage. We've celebrated people who have made bold steps of faith in the past, and I believe this is our opportunity to make a bold step of faith. For our community, to say, what's going on here is that Jesus loves you, that you are precious in his sight, and that we can share the gospel message, that people will come to know who Jesus is. We want to add this spot so that we can just have yet an opportunity, a space to do active ministry. Where maybe a, kid, a dad can bring his daughter to a daddy-daughter dance. Where kids can gather together, maybe shoot some baskets, but then all of a sudden somebody just says, tell me more about Jesus. Or we can celebrate the life of someone who has lived a legacy and just done ministry all their life. This church has a great heritage. And I just pray that as we kind of start to begin this wrapping up of this campaign, that we look at this as our opportunity to take a bold step of faith and to leave a legacy. Let's stand. And I want to just close this worship service with this song as a song of prayer, a sacrifice of praise, and a sacrifice of prayer. When we're done, you're dismissed, and I just hope that you will just continue to pray for our leadership, that we can consider how we take the next step, what is our next step, as we imagine.